In today's video, you're ready to lose that belly fat. You're ready to go from this to this. I'm gonna explain how spot reduction becomes a part of the process of losing belly fat. And I'm gonna explain it using this paper towel roll in this pool. For today's video, I wanna highlight a few people that have lost belly fat. They've gone from this to this, even some women who have gone from this to this. And I wanna talk about the process of losing that belly fat. Now the question I got came from my Instagram, but I also wanna remind you about our 90 day transformation challenge that is just now kicking off. You can sign up for 50 bucks, get your meal plans, your training plans, your private group access. It's open worldwide, prize is $25,000. And the purpose of this 90 day challenge is to help people finally reach their physique goals. We're gonna provide you the support. And that's why you see transformations like this happen, okay? Now, I know the idea of losing belly fat can seem very troublesome. So let me read the question and explain how we can spot reduce belly fat. One question I have is, I've been hard at work in the gym, counting calories since January 1st, and I've lost about 18 pounds, but I still feel my belly hasn't moved much. Is there anything you would recommend to change to maybe help facilitate losing the rest of my belly quickly or stay the course and trust the process? Now, the reason that I wanted to bring you guys out here is because I think it helps to visualize how this process works. Someone like myself that has gone through this process many times, I've been a competitive bodybuilder in the past and I've lost lots of belly fat, right? And so when you see a picture of me like this and a picture of me like this, it might even look like I've maybe added some muscle when in fact, all I've done is reveal the muscle through the loss of belly fat. What you learn through that process is that the body loses fat in a particular order. It stores it in a particular order and then it loses it in an order. Now, it's individual to everybody. However, we all tend to hold body fat at the very end of the process in the same spot. So, losing body fat over a long period of time is gonna allow us to get to that belly fat, but why is that? That's because in a situation just like this, if you look at this paper towel roll, these paper towels at the beginning of the roll are gonna represent fat that you probably don't really care too much about. Fat that's in your face, fat that's on your shoulders, fat that's in your back. The belly fat, is gonna be the fat that gets closer to the center of this roll. And you simply cannot get to this without losing the outer layer of fat, which takes time. Most people don't realize just how much body fat they have. My other favorite analogy is this analogy. If I wanna to get to the belly fat that's at the bottom of this pool, I simply can't drag from the top and hope to lose that. Now, this is still a significant amount of body fat. However, you're not always gonna notice the changes on your body unless you're doing two things. One, take pictures. I really require my clients when they're checking in to take pictures each week because it's very motivating when you see the body fat coming off your back. Most men particularly are gonna lose a lot of fat off their love handles before they start to lose that belly fat. However, we can only really see ourselves in that mirror. You might lose 15, 20, 30 pounds and look in the mirror and still not see much of a visual difference. This is why pictures become very handy. The other is measurements. If you're not taking any measurements, this can also be helpful for guys, the belly, okay, sometimes the arms, the chest. For women, the thighs and the buttocks are really going to store a lot of that body fat. But the center of our bodies, okay, for men and women, from the knees up and from the chest down, that is where body fat is primarily stored. So to lose this belly fat, what does it entail? Last year I ran an experiment where I woke up every single day and got on my walking treadmill for 60 minutes. What I ended up doing was losing about 11 pounds of body fat over that 30 days. And what it did was it helped me create what's called a caloric deficit. Now, if you guys are familiar with the idea that you should eat less and move more, for me, this is the worst fitness advice you could ever give anyone because you've not really told them anything. Eating less what? Eating less calories, eating less volume, eating less fat, eating less carbs. How about moving more? Well, how do you move more? Is it walking? Is it cardio? Is it resistance training? Is it wiggling? What type of movement, right? So the idea is that we have a two-pronged approach. We are gonna be accountable to our nutrition. If you've never done it, you can simply download a free app. The one I use is called Nutrition IX. Just start plugging in what you eat and drink. Everything that we take in has calories. If you start being accountable to these calories, then you can start to pay attention to saying, well, maybe I can just take in a few less calories. You'll still feel fine. You can also separately find a way to create some movement. Now, the reason why I like to do my walking every morning is because I've got kids, I run a business, and what I do is I get up at five or six in the morning and I walk before the world gets started. I can create an incline and I can create a speed that allows me to break a light sweat. For me, this is the magical place where fat loss happens. Not where I'm sweating profusely and I can't speak. I call that high intensity cardio. I prefer to save my 
intensity for my weightlifting sessions. I like to lift weights a couple days a week, but I like to walk daily. I find it helps me with mental clarity, helps me with body composition. What I'm doing there is I'm taking an approach where I'm accountable to my calories, I'm accountable to my activity, and if I want to eat less, I now know I can eat less calories. And if I want to move more, I now know that I've been doing 30 minutes a day. If I wanna move more, I simply do 40 or 50 or 60 minutes a day. You can now pay attention to this. This is where you start to lose the belly fat. When you've been doing this for a long enough period of time, made some adjustments, and like you said, you've successfully lost 18 pounds, but you're starting to get into a little bit of a rut. This is where we wanna provide you guys the support with our meal plans, with our training plans, and our private group support where we're gonna answer your questions. We can also provide you with a one-on-one -on -one coach if that's something you're interested in. I'm gonna put the link down below. But remember guys, the idea of spot reduction for body fat, it comes from this idea that you can lose from one specific area before everywhere else. The only way to spot reduce is to lose enough body fat that your body starts using the fat from that spot. Hopefully this helps you guys on your way. Please continue to ask me questions. I really wanna help clarify this and I promise you, if you look at this as a life-changing daily routine and behavior-changing approach, you're gonna get there a lot better and stay there a lot longer than if you just try to completely change all behaviors and get there in a manner that is not sustainable once you reach that goal. I also wanted to update you guys on my starting point. So here are my pictures, front and back, for day one of the 90 Day Transformation Challenge. I'm also joining. Now, my goals are not to get shredded this time. I got shredded last year. So you hear, but really what I want to do is I want to put on a little bit of muscle, lose a little bit of body fat. I want to improve my hormonal profile. I got some blood work done. So I'm going to share that with you guys. I'm also going to provide you guys with the exact training blueprint that I'm doing. My next update video, I'm going to show you my program that I'm on. Also, I'd like to introduce you guys to Caleb Weeks. If you guys remember, I said I was going to select someone to be trained by me for this 90 day challenge. Now, Caleb reached out and um, he was randomly selected, but you guys probably aren't gonna believe this. He doesn't live too far away from me. So I did not select Caleb. He was selected by Sandy, who is our uh, customer service liaison. She's amazing. But when I found out that he was from Tarpon, I got really excited. So we'll, we'll discuss that. Um, we've already had our consultation phone call. He's already joined the challenge. So really, I just wanted to get you guys involved. We've got some time left if you're interested in joining. I'll put the link in the description box. Now back to the video. All right, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow.